Hello and welcome back to my channel. So I made my first million at 35 working from home. But if I had followed the advice that I'm going to share in this video, I would have gotten there a lot sooner. So these are the four key lessons that I would give to my younger self if I had to start all over again. So let's start with the very first lesson. Back when I was younger, everyone I knew made money in the same way. They had a job, they worked many, many years, they bought a house or two, and they would retire. And so the implicit message was that the way to make money was this. You work hard all your life, you invest in properties, and with that, you retire. But then at the age of 25, I went to an event by Jack Canfield and it changed my life. I will forever be grateful to Jack, my first mentor and I, my friend, for opening up my eyes about how if you can dream about something, you can do it. Even if everyone around you has never done it before. He taught me that if my dream was to become financially successful at a relatively young age, I did not have to necessarily work my ass off for 60 years and that I could join the Manifestors Club, people who paved their way to their dream life by shifting their mindset. And the first step was being very clear about what my dream was. And so I wrote down my goal. I will make $1 million by the age of 35. And I went back home after the event and decided I would find the highest paying job that I could. So I got hired as a consultant for a very big business coaching company. And I was getting paid more than my four best friends combined. And I thought, this is it. I'm on the fast lane, baby. I'm making more money and my way faster to my first million than any of my friends. But I soon realized that while I was getting paid well, I did not like what my life looked like at all. I was leaving my home at 7.15 a.m. I was doing a 75 commute train. I was working all day in a job that was okay, but not really something I loved. I was working for a boss who was a complete control freak. I was in a small overcrowded office and getting back home at 6 p.m. completely exhausted. And so, yeah, I mean, I had the one million goal, but did I see myself spending the next couple of years feeling trapped in this job? So I went back to the goal that I had written and I rewrote it. Make $1 million before 35 while feeling free. And from that day, it became a clear goal in my mind. So lesson number one is to have a clear goal for financial freedom in mind. You don't necessarily need to have a number, although it adds some power to it, but you need to have the goal to be financially free or becoming a millionaire, or however you like to say it. Having a clear goal is like putting an address onto your GPS in the car. So think of your subconscious mind as the GPS. Once it knows exactly where you want to go, it will find the shortest path to take you there. Every single person I know that has become financially independent had a clear goal to do so. By the way, if you're liking this so far, Hit that like button, please. Okay, so once I had the clear goal written, I want to make a million dollars before age 35 feeling free, my brain started to see opportunities. And so the whole time while I kept doing, you know, my things, I had this idea working in the back of my mind. And I'm very sure that having the clear goal is what led me to finally making it. By the way, I put together a whole class explaining how you can do this too. So if you want to dive deep, grab that free lesson in the link in the description below. All right, second lesson. So I soon started seeing that there were people out there just like me making good money without depending on a paycheck. They were doing independent work. And I thought... That is what I want. I want to make money without the unbearable boss, without someone telling me what to do, without the restricted vacation time. And so I quit my job as a consultant and I decided I would do the same thing, but independently. I would now own my schedule and 100% of my work. And so I got busy with it. I started doing one-on-one -on -one coaching and started running small workshops and I became a speaker and started traveling a lot. So if you have a job today and you're thinking, should I become independent, self-employed? Here's what you need to know. There's pros and cons in each side. And hey, I'm not saying everyone should quit their jobs. Some people love that life, but you know, and they also make good money and feel fulfilled. But here's the thing you need to know. The pros of employee lifestyle. Predictability. You got that steady paycheck. You know exactly what you're getting paid each month. You don't have to hustle for clients. Your customers are basically handed to you. There's growth opportunities. Yeah, there's a ladder to climb. And if you're smart and strategic, you can rise up and boost that salary. There's a steady job that equals lower financial risk. Now, there's also cons to employee lifestyle. Limited freedom. Your time? 
It's not yours. You're at the mercy of the boss or the company schedule. There's an income ceiling, you know, there's a cap on how much you can earn. You're trading hours for dollars and there's only so many hours a day. There's a nasty office politics. Sometimes you have to put up with a difficult boss or work atmosphere. You know what I'm talking about. And the job security thing is a myth. You can get fired any day. Now the pros to independent life, autonomy. You call the shots, you work when you want, how you want and on what you want. You also have bigger earning potential. You know, your income is kind of directly tied to how much value you create. You also get to choose who you work with, which is you kiss goodbye to all the annoying clients who piss you off. And there's also scalability. The right moves can multiply your income without multiplying your time input. Now there's also cons to independent life. Income inconsistency. Some months you're loaded and you feel like, oh my God, this is it. And some months you barely make it. Self-discipline is a must. There's no boss breathing under your neck. That's right. Which means you need to be self-motivated and very disciplined. It can get lonely at times. It can be really lonely. And also client dependency. You know, you, you become like a hunter for clients and it can become super consuming. And there's work-life imbalance. You know, oftentimes you end up working a lot more hours than when you are an employee. So I was enjoying my independent self-employed life. I really was. But in the back of my mind, I kept thinking, how will I keep this pace when I become a mother? Because I knew that at one point I would want to have children, but all my work depended on me being there, you know, physically doing things, being there for my one-on-one -on -one clients and being there for my consulting clients and flying to, I don't know, be a speaker. And certainly I became a mother and my life turned upside down. The fabulous freelance independent life that I had built had one massive flaw. It required me to leave the house every day to make money. And with a two-year-old boy and a newborn baby girl, that was not what I wanted to do. And I felt I was back in square one. And this takes me to lesson number three. I started my search again. How can I make income from my home? And that's where making money online came to my mind. So I started searching everything I could on how to make money online and how to take what I already knew and do it online. I read every book. I listened to every podcast. I saw every YouTube video out there and I was confused and I was not really knowing what I was doing, but I went for it. And so I decided I'm going to start my online business. It sounded so fancy. And so I gradually transferred a lot of my clients to the one-on-one -on -one coaching online. And I worked a lot until I grew, you know, to have groups online. And I was now making as much money as I had with all my in-person things I did before. And while this was a solution to not leaving my house, something was off. I had chosen this path of working from my home because I wanted freedom. And guess what? I was not feeling free at all. I was working at night while my kids slept. I was working on weekends to make up for all the things I could not do during the week. And yes, I was my own boss, but now I was worse off than when I had a boss. I was working more. I was stressing out more. I was driving myself to exhaustion and I was still trading time for money. So what does trading time for money look like? Well, that every time you go on vacation, you don't get paid. That when you take a sick day, you don't get paid. That when they call you from school telling you your kid has a tummy ache and you have to cancel the one-on-one -on -one coaching you had for that day, you don't make money. That you want a two-week vacation, well, it's going to cost you a lot more than the price of the hotel. That when you want to take any time off, you have to do it knowing that you will not make money. And that you have to constantly be creating new ways to generate income. For example, let's say you're a graphic designer, so you're working for a company and you spend a lot of time creating this amazing piece of art and you get paid once for that effort regardless of the value that it brings to the company. So trading time for money is essentially placing a fixed value on your most precious resource, your time, which is limited and non-renewable. My kids were my priority. And if you have kids, you know how time consuming they can be. <laughs> yeah. So and I was, you know what I was having? I was having this constant guilt feeling that when I took time off to be with them, I felt I should be working. And when I was working, I was feeling I should spend more time with my kids. And I was trapped in this vicious cycle of trying to be a homepreneur and a good mom and not feeling the freedom I thought I would have from having built an online business. So I realized that even though I was working online, I was still in the mindset of the only way to make money is by trading your time for it. 
After all, everyone I knew made money by putting their time in exchange. So in the back of my mind, I still had this goal of making one million from my home before 35, feeling free, but I was not seeing how I would ever get there with how I was doing things. And frankly, I was a bit depressed. And then something happened that completely changed my life. And this leads to lesson number four. So during all these years, I intentionally kept looking for people who had the kind of lifestyle that I dreamed of. But nobody around me had that. You know, my family, my friends, all the people I hung out with, they were all following the traditional way. You have a job, you get paid as much as you can, you have a company, you work there every day, or you have a profession and you take maternity leave and then have somebody, you know, somebody support you financially. And uh, I love all these people. I respect them. I admire them. But I wanted something different for me. And you've probably heard that you become the average of the five people you hang out with the most. And so I started to look for ways to hang out with people who were taking a different approach. And so I read a ton of books, I participated in masterminds, I attended seminars, and in one of those seminars, I heard something that blew my mind and it changed my mindset and it set me on a fast lane to make my first million from my home while being free. It was a young guy who showed us he went from being a meditation teacher struggling to make 5k a month by working a ton nonstop to becoming a millionaire. His name is Vishen Lakhiani, the founder of Mind Valley. He opened my eyes to see that there was a different way of making money. And he explained passive income in a way that I finally understood it. You build something once, you sell it forever. I finally understood that if you want to be financially free, you need to build assets that can allow you to make money while you sleep while you're on vacation, while you take the entire day or week or month off to do whatever you want other than work. And you might be wondering, well, that sounds really cool, Florencia, but how do you do that? Well, there's multiple ways and I explored many of them, but there is one that in my experience is the simplest, safest, most profitable one of all, to build an online course. You package what you already know from your profession, if you have one, or from your interests or hobbies, and you build one online course that you sell for a bah. You don't need a degree, you don't need to be a guru, you don't need followers on social media, you don't need any fancy equipment, and it can make you a ton of money from your current skills. Listen to this. There are women making 15k a month teaching yoga, selling a course they built once and they sell forever. There's people making 20K a month teaching basic financial skills. There's people making 15K a month constantly selling a gardening course. Building your own online course is something you could do to make you an extra 10K a month without quitting your job if you don't want to, or it could be the thing you do if you don't have or you don't want a traditional job. I created an entire free class explaining all the details of how I did this and how all the people I taught this to, so you can do it too. So please grab it in the link on the description of this video. It is a step-by-step -step guide to passive income completely for free. Now, the beauty of passive income is that it aligns perfectly with the concept of flow, a state where your actions effortlessly generate wealth, impact, and personal satisfaction. And this isn't just about getting rich. It's about enriching the world around you and aligning your financial success with the success of others. It's wealth that comes not from trading hours, but from transcending them. So these are my four key lessons in my journey to making one million. And I wish I understood this sooner because I would have gotten here much, much faster. And that is why I wanted to share this with you. So as a recap, number one, do not stick to a job that doesn't light a fire in you. It's like wearing shoes that don't fit. Every step hurts. Number two, deciding to become self-employed can be a bold move. But if you're just trading hours for money, you're still running in a hamster wheel, even if the hamster wheel is a golden one. Number three, taking your hustle online. Remember that the internet is not just a marketplace, but a canvas. If you carry the old mindset of trading time for money into the new world, you will find the canvas remains blank. And then you have the game changer level. Create, build something, whether it's an online course, a digital product, something that doesn't just fill your pockets, but also fulfills your purpose. If I could give a single message to my younger self, it would be this. Be bold, be brave, build something that keeps on giving even when you're not working. That's real freedom. And if you want to get started in building your online course, check out the video that explains three steps you need to take 
to do exactly that. And if you have found this valuable, please hit that thumbs up and subscribe button. That's how I know this was inspiring and it inspires me to keep creating more and more videos for you. See you next week.